Let's effing kill them. Let's go in. Let's effing kill the lot of them. Welcome back to Bible Bears, guys. I'm Ryder Cullison. Those are words allegedly spoken by President Donald Trump in regards to Syria's President Assad after Assad unleashed chemical weapons on civilians in Syria. This is all according to Bob Woodward's new book. Now, I don't know that President Trump actually spoke the words like that. I certainly doubt he barged in someone's room and yelled it with such theatrics. However, yesterday on Fox News, President Trump did confirm in an interview with Ducey and Brian Kilmeade that he had a, an opportunity to take out Assad back in 2017. He said, I would have rather taken him out. I had it all set, but Mattis, General Mattis, uh, Secretary of Defense at that time, Mattis was against it. Now, Trump did say, in hindsight, uh, he's not exactly sure how he feels about it. He doesn't exactly regret not having taken him out, but he would have rather taken him out. Now, how do we feel about statements that our world leaders make like that, especially the President of the United States? We used to be this, this moral bastion of, of light. We were a compass to the world, if, if you will. And now we're openly speaking about uh, assassinating other world leaders. Believe it or not, there's actually rules to war and chemical weapons is one of a, a violation to one of those rules. Now the effects of it are devastating. I don't know what it would be like to be in a chemical weapons attack. I can't imagine losing a loved one to such an attack. I imagine that Trump, Joint Chiefs of Staff, all sorts of U.S. lawmakers and other leaders around the world have more insight into this and have more intel into what Assad actually did to his own people. I can't imagine, I, I imagine as a leader, I would be furious as well. With that said, are these statements becoming of a world leader? Are they becoming of a U.S. leader? This isn't the first time a prominent leader in the United States has suggested such an extreme course of action. Back in 2005, if you remember, evangelist Pat Robinson suggested that perhaps we should take out Venezuela President Hugo Chavez. Hugo Chavez made some comment, uh, you know, about the U.S. wanting to assassinate him. And Pat Robinson basically said, yeah, maybe we should oblige. Rather than waging a billion dollar war against a whole country, maybe we should send in a covert team and wage war against one man. Let's just, we should just take him out. Now, of course, this raised eyebrows because Pat Robertson is basically the founder of the Christian Broadcasting Network. He's a Christian saying we should go out and assassinate another world leader. The question is, and this is what I'm throwing out to everybody, is this appropriate? Is it appropriate for the U.S. president to do it? Is it appropriate for a Christian leader to do it? Pat Robertson did walk back his comments a little bit, but he still rationalized them by quoting Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Now, Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a, a pastor and theologian. He could not stand the Nazis. He was opposed to the war. He was opposed to Hitler. And in 1945, he was hung for his alleged involvement in the conspiracy to kill Hitler. This is what Bonhoeffer said. And Robertson quoted Bonhoeffer to justify his suggestion about killing Chavez. If I see a madman driving a car into a group of bystanders, then I can't, as a Christian, simply wait for the catastrophe and then comfort the wounded and bury the dead. I must try to wrestle the steering wheel out of the hands of the driver. So clearly what Pat Robertson is saying here is, and what Bonhoeffer was saying back then is, look, you've got a world leader who's basically plowing through people, running them over, creating calamity. Should I stand by and just take care of the wounded or should I stop this man from wounding others? This is a very interesting dilemma for us to be in. Obviously there's a precedent in the Old Testament. God sent people in 
to cl basically clear the land, to sweep the land. Joshua was sent into Canaan. God said, I'm going to give you the land of Canaan. Now, in many instances, God did the fighting for his people. Or he'd send plagues or pests to go in and drive the people out of the land. But in other instances, I'm thinking of Saul. He said, Saul, go in and wipe out the Amalekites. Every one of them. Not just the soldiers, all the men, women, and children. And kill all the animals too. And when Saul spared some of the animals because he was going to make supposedly a sacrifice to the Lord. He disobeyed the Lord. And Samuel essentially said, you're no longer God's anointed. So there is a precedent for God going in and saying, listen, there's some wicked people here. They're doing wicked, barbaric things. If you haven't read the history on this, you should. Because these people were worshiping gods that were adulterous, idolatrous, incestuous, these people were sacrificing their babies, burning them alive to these gods. It was just a horrible practice and this was flowing through generation after generation after generation. They were soaked, soaked in this blasphemous, idolatrous, abusive pagan culture. So God said, we need a reset here. I don't know what it's like to be a victim of chemical weapons. I think if I was the victim of that, and when my family was the victim of that, I would want Assad taken out as well. I would want the U.S. to stand up for the weak and save these people. Because we know a lot of other countries around the world aren't going to do it. So I understand Donald uh, Trump's, President Trump's comments. I could have taken him out. Maybe I should have. Mattis was against it. We launched some other airstrikes, but you know, maybe the problem would have been solved. This brings up another issue though. We take out Assad, it creates a power vacuum, just a, perhaps a crueler leader fills his spot. We see it in the Middle East all the time. So to me, what we should be doing is going to God for consultation. There's absolute precedent for this in the Bible. Many times, when Israel fell away from God, God did not grant them victory. Many times, and I'm thinking of David, David would go to God first, after someone had hurt him, another army, another ruler, and he'd say, God, what should I do? Should I go to war? Will you grant me victory? Our, war, our world leaders, and especially our leader here in the United States, should go to God first. You have advisors. There's nothing wrong with those advisors. Other rulers in the Old Testament had advisors. They didn't always, they don't, they did not always advise well, but God had no problem with advisors. That's what prophets were for. Samuel, the prophet Samuel was a great advisor. He spoke to God, he gave advice. Our president must either bend the knee and go to God or turn to somebody on his team that is with God, that is strong with Jesus and ask for consultation before we commit these acts. I'm not sure that publicly stating our intentions or our past intentions is wise, but I do see the necessity sometimes in eradicating evil from the world. So here's my question to you. Leave these answers in the comment below. Should we take our enemies out? Or should we pray for our enemies instead? Or should we let God deal with them? Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. There is obviously a precedent as well for not taking vengeance on other people and allowing God, allowing God to balance. Guys, I love your comments. This is, a, I think, a great topic. One that's very important, especially in light of two other Iraqi generals that we took out, Soleimani being one of them. This is going to happen throughout the world. People are going to come after us. How should we proceed? We need, in my opinion, we need to start turning to God and asking for consultation and perhaps allowing God to render justice on our behalf. But I understand too that sometimes God wants us to be instruments of his vengeance. There's a precedent for that as well. Please, guys, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, share, 
and subscribe. I love you. Have a blessed day.